Welcome to this educational video brought to you by the Society of Mechanical Ventilation, Adaptive Support Ventilation, ASV, and Intellivent ASV. Hi, um, in this video we'll talk about uh, ASV and its new generation Intellivent ASV. Uh, we'll try to um, talk about how it works, what's the principles um, of those modes, how to use it, how to set it, uh, how to uh, wean with it, and the evidence behind it. So let's get started. Uh, what is ASV? Um, ASV is really is not a single mode. Um, it's mainly um, an algorithm, uh, which is a closed loop one of the intelligent um, modes of mechanical ventilation. So when I say one, uh, not a single mode, um, if the patient is passive patient with no spontaneous effort, uh, ASV is basically a pressure controlled uh, continuous mandatory uh, ventilation mode. And if the patient is doing some and the ventilator is doing some work, uh, then it becomes uh, pressure, uh, pressure controlled ventilation intermittent mandatory mode. And if the patient all spontaneous and triggering and doing um, uh, work, then it becomes a continuous, continuous mode as a pressure support ventilation. So the mode is actually based on the famous Dr. Otis uh, back in the 50s equation of work of breathing, which you can see it here, which is a pretty um, complicated mathematical question uh, equation um, that I'm not going to even dwell much of it. Uh, but basically what it, um, it says is how to get the least work of breathing. We either go with a high tidal volume and low respiratory rate or a low tidal volume with a high respiratory rate. So the ventilator measures and uh, keeps monitoring the expiratory time constant. And the expiratory time constant, which is basically um, the effect of resistance and compliance, and it gives us a snapshot or an idea of how the respiratory mechanics are. And based on this, the ventilator try um, to get the patient on a tidal volume and the respiratory rate in a safe zone, which we can see in the next slide, to avoid the autopeed and the least work of breathing. So setting ASV is actually pretty simple. Um, in the beginning, we have to input the gender and the height of the patient to calculate the ideal body weight. So if you can see here in the screen, we put an adult patient, uh, male gender, we put the height here 174 centimeters, and it calculates for us that the ideal body weight is 70 kilograms. And when we put this, it calculated actually we had to input the minute ventilation, which is uh, probably uh, the most important uh, setting for uh, ASV. And we put here 100%. 100% ventilation is almost uh, like the normal minute ventilation. Um, and the ventilator um, gives you 100% is 0.1 liter per kilogram per minute, meaning um, 100 milliliter per kilogram per minute. So if my ideal body weight is 70, uh, it will be gonna give you seven minute, uh, uh, minute ventilation per minute. And according uh, to this, the ventilator will tell you um, that the optimal um, uh, settings is respiratory rate 14, respiratory time of 2, respiratory time of 2.4, I to E ratio 1 to 1.2. Um, and we'll go to the settings more in the active simulator. The other thing you have to set, of course, is PEEP. And as any mode of mechanical ventilation, setting the PEEP is a big deal and is very important and um, I would refer you to the other lectures we talked about basics of mechanical ventilation. Um, number three of course the FIO2. So here percent minute ventilation, PEEP, uh, the flow trigger, FIO2 and you can also add the ramp how fast um, the pressure goes up and the expiratory time constant of the ETS and this happens and the, when the patient is spontaneous in the pressure support, um, how fast the transition from inspiration to expiration in the pressure support mode. 
Okay, so we'll start on our long simulator to set the new patient on ASV. So we'll pick a new patient, we'll pick an adult for now, gender, male, uh, put the height to calculate the ideal body weight. So the ventilator calculated for us at 70 kilograms, ideal body weight. And the settings as we talked about, you have to pick the percent minute ventilation and the range is from 25% uh, to 350%. Of course, there's um, hard to tell exactly how to start. Um, uh, you have to use your clinical judgment. There's no guidelines um, on how to start. Um, and we're hoping um, uh, to publish some guidelines of this. Um, but if you start at 100% for now, um, five of peep for example if i2 the flow trigger um, and the ramp meaning how fast the pressure goes and the expiratory time constant or t ets and this uh, works only in the spontaneous pressure support mode um, which is like the flow um, when does the inspiratory uh, cycle uh, ends and expiratory cycle so you can adjust this if you set the 25 the default so in the exists example the inspiratory uh, flow is 50 so once it goes down to 12.5 liters per minute the exhalation would start again this only if the patient is spontaneous okay so we'll start here um, and if you can take a look uh, the ventilator here calculates for us target minute ventilation here with the tidal volume 482 and respiratory rate of 14 and respiratory rate of 2 and if you can see that target sign <clears throat> that's what the ventilator wants us wants the patient to be same settings as here uh, tidal volume 480 and respiratory rate of 14 and that's where the currently the patient is sometimes the patient will increase his <clears throat> respiratory rate or tidal volume and the ventilator will keep adjusting to keep the patient on that green line uh, either low respiratory rate high tidal volume or high respiratory rate low tidal volume and that square is like where the um, uh, the safe area for um, ventilation right now let's talk about the uh, intellivent asv which is uh, basically an ASV but uh, next generation uh, unfortunately I don't have a simulator because it's not uh, approved in the US uh, it's approved in a lot of other countries um, if you look at this diagram um, it will show how a, a intelligent ASV works so there's the input of the operator we put the height the gender um, this is uh, not an ASV so you you put the disease, um, whether it's COPD or uh, obstructive or ARDS, and you put the weaning strategy. Now, what is the ventilator is going to monitor is the end tidal CO2, <clears throat> of course, the flow sensors, and the SpO2, the oxygen saturation. And all this will be inputted into the ventilator controller, and the, uh, it will be on the ASV algorithm. And now the ventilator will have the ability to adjust uh, the percent minute ventilation here that's the output of the ventilator which basically according to the respiratory rate and the tidal volume and the inspiratory time according to the end tidal co2 and the flow sensor of course the breast type and the inspiratory time that's like uh, in the regular asv also the new thing in um, Intelligent ASV is um, the oxygen controller will be able to adjust the PEEP and the FiO2 um, uh, but for right now it's according to the PEEP FiO2 table of the ARDS network um, I'm pretty sure this is the first step and in the future we'll be able to adjust it to more physiologic uh, basis Okay, so um, when you start setting the intelligent ASV, uh, as we said, you have the choice um, of um, naming the patient's condition. So if you look here, you can choose normal, and the ventilator 
gives you the automatic uh, percent minute ventilation 100 percent limit 30 oxygen uh, start up at 60 people 5 ARDS here's 120 uh, limit 35 chronic hypercapnia and as you can see ARDS with hypercapnia or brain injury uh, what cool also is you can set uh, those limits yourself you can set the limits for the uh, minimum PEEP and the high PEEP, the maximum PEEP. Um, and when you look at this diagram, this is the target SPO2, oxygen saturation. And again, you can set the target, um, what's the minimum oxygen saturation you want and what's the maximum. And that's the target here. And that's a patient in the plus sign. And again, the ventilator will adjust by itself the PEEP and the FiO2. Same with the um, for the percent minute ventilation, the uh, you set the target end tide of CO2 with minimum and maximum. And as you can see here, this is the target between 37 and 44 in this uh, example. And uh, the plus sign is the patient. And the ventilator will adjust uh, the percent minute ventilation accordingly. So if the patient is uh, passive with no effort, the ventilator will increase the percent minute ventilation. But if the patient is active and having higher respiratory rate, um, actually the ventilator uh, also will increase the percent minute ventilation to give the patient more pressure support, which is actually very cool because um, this is um, will adjust, will give the patient more in case he is in distress. Uh, if the end tide of CO2 is lower, of course, the ventilator will start decreasing uh, the percent minute ventilation. So, for example, if the patient is markedly tachypneic and the end tide of CO2 is low, um, you have to be cautious and uh, take a look uh, because the ventilator might decrease the percent minute ventilation and the per uh, percent of pressure support which might put the uh, load more on the patient. So what are the indications and contraindications for using ASV? And to my knowledge, um, for any intubated patient with any condition, you can actually use that mode. And as I usually say, you can achieve whatever you want to oxygenate and ventilate the patient with practically any mode. So there is really not a certain disease that is ASV is indicated or ASV is contraindicated for that matter. Uh, from the manual uh, of the ventilator, you can see here, ASV is uh, for adult and pediatrics only, not for neonates, uh, for intubated patients only. And not to be uh, confused because there is a mode non-invasive ASV uh, on other ventilators uh, for heart failure uh, and sleep apnea and stuff, but um, uh, do not confuse it with adaptive support ventilation here. Of course, you have to be aware that you have a CO2 and SPO2 and flow sensor from the ventilator. Um, the contraindication again from the manual, um, do not use the intelligent ASV, uh, the automatic PEEP ox and oxygen controller uh, if there is this hemoglobinemia, uh, because then the SPO2 uh, might not be accurate uh, in cases like, for example, methemoglobin. Um, Heliox is not compatible with the intelligent ASV, and if the patient is ideal body weight less than 7 kilograms, again, usually in units, if there's a big airway leak, um, and if the intelligent ASV targets range for the entire CO2 and the SPO2 cannot set according to the hospital protocol. So again, there is really not um, any contraindications for adults or pediatrics uh, cases. So how are we going to start uh, using ASV for weaning uh, the patients? Um, in the regular ASV, you have to do it manual. Uh, so for in this example, this patient for, uh, with normal uh, respiratory mechanics. We are here at 100% uh, minute ventilation. We're down to people 5, 40%. Uh, 
uh, oxygen in the patient is having spontaneous effort as you can see here he's triggering the ventilator and I can see that the peak inspiratory pressure is pretty low because again normal long mechanics so it's 11 meaning that the ventilator is giving the patient 6 of pressure support over uh, 5 of peak so usually you start by decreasing um, the percent minute ventilation gradually um, and of course uh, you monitor the patient uh, what is cool is the ventilator start giving you uh, this graph here which basically monitors the SBT for the patient it knows that you're doing the spontaneous breathing trial so it measures the uh, patients in 40% of I2 that's a PEEP uh, the expiratory minute vent uh, minute volume is 8 liters um, gives you a range the peak inspiratory pressure is 6 again we said above the uh, 5 it calculates the rapid shallow breathing index and it tells you how much the patient is doing here he's doing 100% of the, of the work and once uh, actually you start the patient becomes totally spontaneous and you decrease the percent minute ventilation the counter starts to tell you exactly how long the patient uh, is in spontaneous mode and if you look here this is gives you a range in that light blue that if the patient is within that limit um, it means that uh, he's doing well and uh, on the spontaneous breathing trial and of course up to you after 30 minutes or 60 minutes whatever um, you decide if the patient is ready to be extubated or not um, the cooler and fancier way in the intelligent ASV is actually you have uh, the option of enabling the ventilator to do an automatic uh, spontaneous breathing trial um, or you can do it manually uh, like here and the ventilator by itself you can set time to do it uh, you can set parameters like for example once the peep is below 8 once the FI2 is 40 um, once the patient is having on spontaneous and the ventilator starts the percent minute ventilation uh, drop down to 70 uh, and continue monitors the patient um, so basically it does it uh, for you and alerts the clinician if the patient is doing well um, So what's the evidence in the literature about using uh, ASV? And uh, by searching the literature, and uh, this is one of the articles in our Journal of Mechanical Ventilation um, that basically reviewed the use of ASV um, in weaning um, and um, is it safe mode for COPD and ARDS or if it's a safe mode in uh, ventilation for changes in lung dynamics and if does ASV impact the bedside respiratory therapist and the conclusion was ASV uh, appears to be at least at least as effective or even more superior than other modes during weaning and other forms of respiratory um, failure so again the literature is full um, uh, of such evidence and I don't know of any um, uh, evidence that says ASV or intelligent in general is least is less effective.